I've become convinced over the years that one of the most difficult things for anybody to do is to give well, to give wisely. I've been in a multitude of places where I felt people should have given this and that and they gave something else instead or gave nothing at all. I've also received an inordinate number of gifts that were inappropriate, unappreciated, um, awkward, etc. Nowhere does this surface as vigorously, as clearly as with our volunteers. There's so many people that want to come and volunteer, yet we've had an atrocious track record with volunteers because they're generally giving from the posture of slaves, not from the posture of sons. And this is something that God addressed very early on in this transition from slavery to sonship in Israel. The context for God discovering, for God discussing right giving was the Nazarite vow. Now you need to understand one pivotal issue about the Nazarite vow. It was absolutely, totally, completely voluntary. Nobody under any circumstances was required to embrace a Nazarite vow. So it was a voluntary thing, a gift that you gave to God out of the goodness of your heart. Yet because of the difficulty in giving well and because slaves give so badly, God stepped in and vigorously defined what constituted a right gift. That is a pivotal issue that every son needs to understand about giving. It's not a good gift unless the receiver values it. So God stipulated, this is how you're to do the Nazarite vow. Yes, it's voluntary. Yes, it begins in your heart. Yes, you want to bring creativity to it. But I will not accept it unless it is this way. And God began to lay out the criteria. So often, we create a social contract with our gifts that if we have given sacrificially, it should be accepted. This is what we run into with volunteers all the time. They come and they want us to be grateful to them because of the sacrifice they're making and coming. And because of that, when we try to lean on them to do things our way, to raise the standard of excellence, to accommodate our particular structure, they are resentful over our lack of gratitude for the sacrifice that they're making. But again, the principle is a gift is not truly a gift unless it is valuable to the receiver. So God addressed this voluntary service to the Most High God against the bigger backdrop of how a son gives and how a slave gives and the fact that he, God, the recipient of the gift of the Nazarite vow, had the right to define what the gift was like and how. In a few weeks, you're going to see a very different look in the set. Study this clip very closely and notice the shadows. We have recently had a volunteer come in and do an absolutely superlative job of establishing a perimeter of pipe around the ceiling so that we can hang a variety of lights and have a more professional looking studio. The volunteer was Kurt. He doesn't normally do this. He's a supervisor of large construction projects, but he gave according to what I wanted. He did not shortchanged the job. He did not do it badly. It cost more time and more effort than he intended it to. It was more complex than he thought when he started out. It took two Saturdays of his time away from his family to do it, but it was a mark of his sonship that he never flinched. It's a mark of his sonship that he pursued it to the very end, did it with excellence, overcame some rather formidable obstacles, and he actually did it even better than I would have expected it to be done. That is the mark of a son who did not count his own sacrifice. Kurt did not keep track of what it cost him in time and effort and gas to drive here and the materials and all of that. 
He merely focused on the objective and gave us a superlative gift because he began from the point of view of his sonship and what it was that I needed rather than counting the cost. Slaves are always keeping score. Slaves do lousy math. Slaves will want to be sure that you know what a sacrifice it was for them to give this gift. A son focuses on the receiver, not on his price, and he gives a good gift. And God made that statement clear, emphatic, violently. Yes, you can spontaneously give me gifts, but only on my terms, not on yours.